Well, howdy, everybody. It's great to see you. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of 913. Now, if you watch my videos regularly, you know what I do. I share with you hot penny stocks I find through the day as I'm trading penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find anywhere. They are on every single market. There is no lack of penny stocks. But I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us some money because I know that's what you're looking for. Why else would people ask me, how high do you think this stock is going to go? I have no clue. But everybody's looking for the ceiling. And that is a dangerous tactic, folks. You miss the ceiling, you normally end up holding a bag and taking a huge loss. Well, today, I'm going to help. I'm going to share with you a tool that gives you more gains without you having to do anything. It's called a trailing stop loss. The stop loss is attached to your price. So as the price moves up, your stop loss moves up with it and you get extra gains as long as that price keeps climbing. One of my favorite tools, folks. Now, over the last month, each weekend, I have been sharing information with you on how to set up your trades and get the most out of them. Starting with the basic, supports and resistances. Folks, I traded without supports and resistances for like three years because I didn't know what they were. I didn't know how to use them. And I lost a lot of money because I had no clue where to get in, where to get out, where to set up a stop loss. You can't do any of that without supports and resistances because they are the speed bumps on the chart. What do we do when we approach a speed bump? We slow down. Well, so does the price normally. The price will even stop. It'll even back up. So underneath a support and resistance, an S and R is normally where we exit a trade. If the price goes up over that speed bump, it normally starts to pick up speed going to the next one. So we enter just over these speed bumps and then we get out before the next one. So we have our price entry, our price target, and we put in a stop loss, right? You want a safety net. In case she breaks away and starts to fall, you've got an automatic sell there that'll eject you out of this deal so you don't end up holding a bag taking a huge loss. The next video was scalping, which works on those supports and resistances as I just explained to you. Knowing where to get in just over the speed bump is your entry point, not on it, but over it. And as it approaches the next resistance, we get out. That's called scalping, taking a little bit off the top. We're not worried about how far it's going to go. Now, yes, you are taking smaller profits, but you're getting more wins. And by the end of the day, you've got multiple wins under your belt which is making you feel pretty darn good and add up all those small winnings. Now you've got a nice day of winnings. Folks, I like scalping for the primary reason. I find it a lot easier to predict where a stock's going to go in the next five to 10 minutes than the next five to 10 days or five to 10 weeks, right? Then the last one we looked at was bullish patterns. Bullish patterns tell us of charts that are about ready to run. Now, the neat thing about bullish patterns is you don't have to be an expert at reading charts. We're not reading the chart. We're looking at it like a piece of art. You're looking for a pattern, a cup and handle. It looks like a cup and a handle. You're looking for a double bottom. It looks like a big W. You don't have to read the chart to see a big old W down there. You can see it. And that's what this is all about. Recognizing a hot chart so that you can get your supports and resistances in there so you can set up your entry price, your target price, and your stop loss. Excellent. We are minimizing our risk by planning our trades before we get in. We know exactly where we're getting out when things go good. We know exactly where we're getting out when things go bad. Now, this is a great strategy and it feels good. You get done with your play. You just took $80. Not a lot of money, but it was easy to get in seven minutes. You didn't have to sit around all day sweating and wishing and hoping, getting all frustrated. You were in and out real quick, got your gains. This is great. Now, the problem is, is that at the end of the day, that stock you took $80 on, you got out at $1.20, that bloody thing went to $4. Now you don't feel so good, do you? I mean, you did get a gain. You were successful. 
You planned your trade. It came through exactly the way you were hoping. And yet you have no wind in your sail because there was a lot more money on the table than there was in your portfolio. This is going to solve that problem. A trailing stop loss moves up the chart with your price. So let's take a look at a chart now as an example of how a trailing stop loss works. I can talk to you till I'm blue in the face, but an example is going to be a lot clearer than all my words. So we've got a company here. We like it. We've looked at the chart. It looks like it's ready to run. So we're setting up our trade. Now keep in mind, we are over here putting in our trade. So none of this exists yet. Just hasn't happened. We are just breaking a support here. We see an entry. Let's call it a dollar even. Nice dollar over the support. We set our stop loss down 20%. Now you can put it in as 20% if you want. And as the price climbs, 20% will increase your losses. 20 cents becomes 22 cents, 25 cents. Or you can just put in a dollar figure, a penny figure, whatever it is you choose. We're going to use 20 cents just to keep this simple. So we have a 20 cent spread between our entry and our stop loss. This trailing stop loss is going to follow us as soon as we start to move. We go up 50 cents, our stop loss goes up 50 cents, trailing behind us by 20 cents. She starts to dip, closing in on her stop loss. The stop loss won't move. It never falls down. It only goes up. If we hit our stop loss, it will sell. If we don't hit it and we start to climb again, guess what? That's right. Our stop loss goes up with us. So if we did make it up to $2, our stop loss would be at $1.80. We push up to $2.50, our stop loss moves up to $2.30. When you finally fall back that full 20 cents and tag it, then you're going to sell and you're going to be out. And all of these adjustments to your trailing stop loss are automatic. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to sweat. Should I get out here? Should I get out here? You just kick back and watch it run, folks. And when she's done running, she's going to cash out and you're going to have your money. I love a trailing stop loss, folks. Now, there are a few things you have to take regard with when you're using trailing stop losses. A few caveats, if you will. First off, a stop loss is the most critical aspect of any trade. You get this wrong, you're ruining everything else you set up. If your stop loss is too close to your entry, too tight, you may find the stock comes down and hits it and bounces right off of it and just takes off and you're out of your trade with a small loss. Yeah, it's a small loss, but you do that often enough, it ends up being a big loss at the end of the day. So we've got to make sure that our stop loss is down far enough that we don't bounce off of it. Best way to do that is look at your support and resistance over the past. See how often she comes down under it and how far she comes down. If she's coming down a nickel underneath it, you better put your stop loss further than a nickel underneath that support. Six, seven, eight cents. You want to make sure you don't get stopped out. Second thing, not all brokers use trailing stop losses and they definitely don't set them up the same way. So it would behoove you to call them on the phone and actually ask them how to set up a trailing stop loss for a long play. You're looking to make profit buying and selling shares. You are not shorting the stock and you can use this same strategy for shorting as well. So make sure to let them know you are going long. How do you set up a trailing stop loss? And the last thing you need to know is that it's not guaranteed to go off. This is a market order. You can set them up as limit orders as well, but I'm not going to go into all that. They are normally market orders, but if the stock gaps, if you got in at a dollar, you put your stop loss at 20 cents and it falls down to 60 cents with nothing in between, it's just going to pass you. It's going to go right past you down to 60 cents, never engage your stop loss, and you're going to be holding a big loss and a bag. That is possible, folks. So you've got to be very cautious when you're playing volatile stocks. Look at how big those bounces are and watch it. And I always, always back up my stop losses. That is to say, I got my finger on the trigger. Something goes wrong and it doesn't go off. I'm here to back it up. I do not walk away from my day trades and my scalps. I am eyeballing them like an eagle. They ain't getting away from me. I hope this information helps you folks. It isn't going to hurt you to do some more due diligence. There's a lot of strategies out there on how to do this. Lots of people use trailing stop losses in different ways. You know what I always say? The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks. Thank you.